king Jesus the light of the world glory to the newborn king Jesus the light of not the darkness in the world because light shines in the darkness yes, amen yes. and we are to be that light hallelujah yes. hallelujah. hallelujah we are to be didn't the word say that we are salt and light okay yes. that yes. means we too are light we are light if we are of him amen, amen. today is amen. palm sunday amen. hallelujah amen. today is palm sunday Today we recognize the day that Jesus started his descent into the city mm -hmm. so that he could do the greatest work that had ever been done and will ever ever be done right. in earth, on earth, and in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. When he came and he walked and he died for us, but hallelujah, how many of you know he didn't stay dead? Yeah. How many of you know that he, they, and, and, and the thing is, the thing is, he told him he was coming back because yeah. he don't lie. 
And he told him he was coming back. So they not only buried him, but they buried him in what? A borrowed tomb, because they knew he wasn't going to need it for long. Because on three days later, hallelujah, we're going to celebrate that next next week yes, on Resurrection yes, yes, Sunday. Yes. Good morning. Hola. Hola. Good morning. Buenos dias. <laughs> Bienvenido. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been uh, on the sun, in, in the sun, and down in the island in Mexico for the last 10 days. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Greetings. Greetings. Welcome, everybody, to Fresh Visions Community Church, 1551 J. David Jones Parkway, right here in the great city of Springfield, Illinois. And if you are in the building, go ahead and give yourself a hand clap. If you are in the building. So we welcome you. We welcome you, Fresh Visions family, Fresh Visions friends, Fresh Visions online community. And we greet you this morning in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior, yes. who is our Lord, yes. who is the Messiah, who is the King of Kings, who is the Lord of Lords, yes. Yes. the one yes. that came to save me and you. Hallelujah. So you ought to automatically say, thank you, Jesus, every yes. day that you wake up and you ain't dead. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This morning... Um, oh, we will be having uh, communion later on. So uh, for those of you that are online, you can prepare your, um, your bread and your, your juice or your wine or whatever you will be partaking of to commemorate the Lord's Supper. And uh, if you have not in the building, let the ushers know and they will make sure that you get whatever you need. Comes from one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times, all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. And the angel of the Lord is all around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Here's the best part. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord and his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall never lack any good thing. Come, you children, and listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Yes, Depart from evil and do good. Yes. Seek peace and pursue it. Yes. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. Yes. For the Lord is near to yes. those who have a broken heart. And he saves such with a contrite spirit. Yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers them out of all. Yes. May we be blessed by the hearing, yes. the reading, and the understanding Amen. of God's most holy word. Amen. Amen. Sister Jackie. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come before your presence on this morning. First of all, just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for this day that you have given us. God, this is the day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, God. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. Yes. How majestic is your name. Yes. How mighty is your name. How powerful is your name. How wonderful is your name. How blessed is your name in all the earth. God, we thank you on this morning just for being who you are. God, we thank you on this morning for waking us up, thank you, Lord. closing us in our right mind, giving us health and strength, giving us the activities of our limbs. God, thank you that we have eyes to see 
Thank you we have ears to hear. Thank you we have a mouth and a tongue in which we can give you praise. God, we don't take it for granted. We say thank you, oh God. You, Lord. And Lord, when we woke up this morning, we found all well, oh God. Yes. Lord, we thank you that through the storms and the rain that you kept us. God, through the storm and the rain, our houses are still standing. God, through the storm and the rain, you protected us. Not just from the winds that we experience on these last few days, but God, the storms of life, you've kept us through it all. Through our good days, you've kept us. Through our bad days, you've kept us. Through our ups, you've kept us. Through our downs, you've kept us. When we've been sick, oh God, you've kept us. And God, when we feel all right, you have kept us. So God, we thank you for being a God who is a keeper. Not just a, a regular old keeper, oh God. You are a promise keeper. And we thank you that we can stand on the promise of God. Lord, we thank you for being God. Thank you for being God and God alone. Thank you for sending your son Jesus yes. to die on the cross. Yes, God. God, we thank you that thank you, Lord. he didn't stay there. <laughs> God, we thank you that he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. And for that, we give you praise. And God, because he got up, we can get up. God, because he got up, we can get up. And we say thank you, oh God, for getting up power. Lord, we say thank you for resurrection power. Lord, we just honor you on this morning. We bless you on this morning. And God, we pray. We pray for those that are under the sound of my voice. God, you know every need. You know every concern. God, you know what we left at home and what we had to press our way through to make it here on today. And so God, because we're here, we want to give you praise. Because we're here, we want to give you glory. Because we're here, we want to say thank you, oh God. Because we're here, we want to worship you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. Lord, and for those that are listening in, those who are not able to be in the building physically, but God, they are in your presence by just virtue of joining in. And so God, we say, have your way in their homes, have your way in their lives, meet needs and meet concerns. God, for every blessing, we know that you are able to fulfill. So God, for those who are sick, we thank you for being a healer. For those who are struggling in their minds, we thank you for being a mind regulator. For those who are burdened in their heart, we thank you, oh God, for being a heart fixer. God, for those who have left troubles at home, God, we thank you for being a God of peace and a God of purpose. So God, we thank you on today. We lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you, oh God, because you are worthy to be praised. God, thank you for continuing to walk with us. Thank you for continuing to hold us up. God, we know that if it had not been for you who was on our side, I don't know where we would be. But God, thank you for walking with us. Thank you for holding us. Thank you, oh God, for supporting us. Thank you, oh God, for keeping the enemy at bay. God, when the enemy came in like a flood, Lord, you said that you would raise a standard against it. And so, God, we thank you. Thank you for being a God who hears us, who answers us, who protects us, who goes before us, who is behind us. And, Lord, we thank you for Jesus and his shed blood. Thank you that his blood covers us. Thank you, oh God, that his blood restores us. Thank you that his blood redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. And for that, we give you praise. For that, we give you glory. For that, we give you worship, oh God. We thank you that we have been bought with a price. And that price was the precious.
precious blood of Jesus. Thank you that his blood washed away our sins. Thank you that because of his blood, we can be made whole. Thank you, oh God, that you take the fractured pieces of our lives and you put them back together again. We honor you. We honor you. We lay our burdens at your feet, oh God. We, we cast our upon you. We lay our burdens at the altar, oh God, because we know that you can do something about it. You said cast all our cares upon you. Why? Because you care for us. God, we thank you for being a caring God. Thank you for being an almighty God. Thank you. And Lord, we welcome you in this place. Yes, we can't move without you. We can't breathe without oh God, you. Oh we welcome you in this place. Yes, Spirit of the living God, oh. fall fresh on us today. Yes. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Yes. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you in this place. Yes. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. Make us new. Make us over again. And the man that will bring your word, oh God, touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And God, as he pours out into us, you pour back into him that which he pours out. God, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you. We praise you. You've been so good to us, oh God. Lord, you've been better to us than we even deserve. You've been better to us than we've even been to ourselves. And we say thank you, oh God. We don't take it for granted. We say thank you, oh God. From the depths of our soul, we say, thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we love you. We honor you. We give you praise. Yes. Let our lives be an example. Yes, Lord. For you, oh God. Let our lights shine. For you, oh God. Yes, Lord. Let us thirst after you, oh God. Yes, Lord more of you less of us more of you less of us more of you oh god and less of us we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor not unto us oh god but to you we give glory god will be careful to point people to the cross and the finished work of the cross. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray and we ask it all. Amen. 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 Come on and bless his name. Come on and bless his name. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Come on, we invite you 
Can you lift your hands and sing? Jehovah is your name. Provides for me, Jehovah is Oh! 
Hallelujah. the Lord it's all right to bless the Lord it's all right just because the song stopped you don't have to stop blessing the Lord amen I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord the psalmist says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land let everything that has breath let everything, everybody that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Certainly we give thanks to God for this wonderful time, this great day of celebration as we reflect upon the goodness of our God. This is referred to as Palm Sundays. Palm Sunday. Amen. If you've been studying for a while, you know that as Jesus was entering Jerusalem, they were laying palm branches and crying out, Hosanna, save us now on that particular day. Unfortunately, there were a few days that passed, and then some of the, some of the same people, prayer wasn't all of them, but some of the same ones were saying, crucify him. Amen. What a great reminder that we shouldn't get too caught up on the hype of others. Amen. One day you're up, and the next day they may be saying, crucify her, <laughs> crucify him. But we can put our trust and faith in the Lord, who's always consistent and is the same. Thank God for each of you. Thank God for all of your presence, and thank God for those who are tuning in online and worshiping with us in your home or in your place of employment. Thank God that we can um, celebrate uh, the Christ who is alive. Amen. We, we don't have to wait till next week to make that appeal, to let that be known. He, he is alive. Blessings to all of our visitors. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us. And as always, uh, we are grateful for the Fresh Visions family. So it's good when all of us can come together and celebrate our God. Let's pray together, and then we're going to get right into the word today from Luke 22. Luke 22. Let's go before our God. Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for your love. Thank you, God, for the worship experience. Thank you, God, for every person that's present. Thank you, God, for every person that's online. God, we know that every uh, concern you already know about, every prayer request you already know about, and yet you choose to respond according to your divine plan and order, oh God, and we are grateful for that. So now, God, we pray that you will minister to your people as only you can. Speak, God, with clarity. Lord, uh, touch as only you can touch. God, where there's disturbance, where there's chaos, where there's worry, we pray, that God, that you will blot it out and that you will be exalted, you will be glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen, amen. and amen. Praise God, praise God. Luke 22, Luke 22. Some were referring to Peter in the studies this morning. And we get a chance to see a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, about Peter and his boldness. Um, some would say before it got hot in the kitchen and yet we will also see a loving father that in spite of our fails, fail, falls and failings he is still faithful so Luke 22 hopefully you have it and it should be on our screen if you don't have your Bible starting at verse 54, concluding at verse 62. I'm reading from the New King James Version. These are the words found therein. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. 
Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him, referring to Jesus, with Jesus. Verse 57, but he denied him, saying, woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, you also are of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently, confidently affirmed, saying, surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Verse 60, but Peter said, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Verse 62, so Peter went out and wept bitterly. For a few moments, I want to talk about learning from the mistakes of others. Learning from the mistakes of others. Reverend Timms, you've often heard me say, I, I, uh, I can learn from my mistakes, but it just seems so much better when I can learn from the mistakes of others. It, it, it just doesn't hurt as bad, thank you. I don't get as many bruises. I'm not in the doghouse as much, brothers, <laughs> when I learn from the mistakes of others. In the book, Why Great Men Fall, Wade Goodall records in the preference. He says something like this, for over three decades, I have had the privilege of working with leaders watching talented people succeed because of hard work, great ideas, and wise choices is a thrill. He goes on to say, watching them go too far, risk too much, and make choices that compromise their career and family is shocking and very sad. Why did he decide to have that affair? What thought process did he go through to persuade himself to take that ethical risk? The price he paid for what he did was everything. Throughout history, he goes on to say, great men have made wrong decisions that have radically changed their lives. However, there are some who have made bad choices and decided to learn from it, grow through it, and become even a greater leader. He concludes with the verse Psalm 37 and 24 where he says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And so, his book is more focused on men and men staying on the right track. But for the record, women can make bad choices as well. Amen. And perhaps you know and have observed people who are making or who have made poor decisions and poor decisions after poor decisions. And perhaps you have been the one to lovingly warn them of the consequences of those poor choices. But then again, perhaps you were the one who attempted to comfort or to encourage someone else, someone who's close to you after the expected consequences became a blurring reality 
although your initial warnings were ignored. Maybe you have come alongside to help lift somebody else up. Or just maybe, just, just, just maybe, I'm not sure, maybe you can recall when others attempted to warn you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to uh, share with you about the consequences of poor decisions and, 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 and maybe you ignored your own convictions along with the warnings of others and you still feel the brunt of the decisions, although they were made years ago. For the record, for the record, this, this message is, is, is not to dig up old, buried, negative memories, nor to have people beat themselves up over the things that they have repented of and the Lord has already forgiven. The hope, here's the hope, the hope is to sound the alarm. That, 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 that we should learn from every poor decision and not keep repeating it over and over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And perhaps, perhaps the greater hope, here it is, the greater hope is that we can learn from the mistakes of others. Yeah. Well, that, that there's a lot in the Bible that we can learn about yeah. and, and, and learn from. Yeah. The Lord intentionally records the errors and the poor decisions of ungodly men and women yeah. and godly men and women yeah. to reveal that, 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 that they as well as we're all capable of erring and falling. Yeah. But here's something else I believe. I believe that one of the main reasons that the Lord, God Almighty, places the failing and the fall of mankind in Scripture is so that we don't have to wonder how continual bad behavior ends up. He says, there's pride and then there's the fall. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's an order. The results or consequences are recorded throughout the scripture. But there's something else that I believe he wants us to know. Although you may have made poor decisions and didn't initially learn from the mistakes of others, it's not too late. Yeah. That's the good news, people. Yeah. It's, it's not too late. God is not holding his foot on you and keeping you down. It's not too late. In fact, although you blew it, God can restore you. And he can use you. And he can use your poor decisions as a testimony for others that they can see that God can still use people who have made poor decisions. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He can still use people who have failed. He can still use people even though they had to go through the painful consequences of their decisions. God can still use broken people. God can still use people who are bruised from their errors and their bad choices. God can still use people who are still working through their hang-ups. God can still use people. In fact, Proverbs 24 and 16 gives us a whole lot of grace. Well, it says, for though the righteous fall seven times, they rise up again. And so here's the alarm. Here's the alarm. It's time to rise up again. Yes, you've fallen. It's time to rise up again. Maybe it was three times, four times. It's time to rise up again. When I read through the Bible, when I read through the scriptures, David, he made some poor decisions. 
found himself in the wrong place, <laughs> found himself looking where he shouldn't have been looking or looking when he should have turned away. He found himself with another man's wife. He found himself trying to hide a, a, a baby that was his and, try, his and tried to blame it on somebody else. He found himself being a murderer. And yet God says, I can still use David. And he still referred to David as the apple of his eye, the apple of God's eye. Abraham made some poor decisions and God promised him uh, a land upon land and how his descendants were going to uh, um, progress and how the, when he looked in the stars he wouldn't be able to number his children and looked on the sand looked at the sand he wouldn't be able to number uh, like the sand his, his children and yet he and his wife made some poor decisions yeah, yeah. they felt that God wasn't moving quick enough and they wanted to put things in their hands rather than leave them in God's hands yeah. And yet this same Abraham who made some poor decisions as a father, as a, as a husband, yet this same uh, 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 man is referred to as the father of faith. God can use some people with some messed up past and give them a great future. Amen. <laughs> Moses, Moses made some poor decisions. Moses should have signed up for anger management. Moses, Moses was, you know, he, he had the right uh, idea, didn't want to see people harmed or misused or abused, but he took it, he made the wrong steps. He, he had a heart for people being treated fairly and especially his family members or people close to him. But he saw one of his brothers, one of his friends, or perhaps his relative uh, being abused and, 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 and Moses went and murdered that man. And, and he thought that he had gotten away until somebody revealed, I know what you did. I think there was a movie I know what you did last night I don't know if it's a good movie so I don't 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 hold me to it or not but I know what you did and Moses had to get out of town but yet Moses is referred to as the most humblest man in the Bible it was Moses that God chose to use he says Moses I got some people in Egypt that I'm ready to deliver I'm ready to set them free and Moses I want you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go yeah. I would not have chosen a murderer I would not have chosen someone who committed adultery and then had the woman's husband murdered. I would not have chosen someone to be the father of faith uh, who's questioning God and didn't even act in faith. But I'm not God. Aren't you grateful for that? And you're not God. Aren't you grateful? I'm grateful that you're not God. <laughs> I'm grateful that God is God and we're not and God still used broken people with messed up past and made poor decisions. And God uses people and he chooses to forgive people when they ask for forgiveness. And then he sends them back and allows them to do great things. Well, we're talking about Peter today. To appreciate Peter's denial of Christ three times, as we read earlier, we have to look at his adamant statement that he would always stand with and by Christ even after he had told, he being Jesus, had told the disciples that they would all fall away. So in Mark gospel Mark records Mark the 14th chapter verses 29 through 31 this is from the New International Version this is what Peter declared Peter declared even if all fall away can you see Peter 
puffing up his chest. I will not. And then the Lord says this, truly I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, yourself will disown me three times. Verse 31, Peter puffs up again, but Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And it wasn't just him, and all the others said the same. This is what Peter said before they started beating him. This is what Peter said before they came with all of the armor and the shield and the spear and took Jesus. That's what he said. That's what he said when they were with him and it was a calm and peaceful somewhat environment. And y'all know how it can be. Everything is calm and peaceful. God is good. I'm ready to run for you, Jesus. But when things get chaotic and crazy, we forget about those promises that we made. Fear tends to become the main fact instead of faith. And Peter is human. He had flesh and blood. He had fears like you and I. He wanted to live. He didn't want to be crucified. He didn't want to go to the cross. And so just as the Lord promised, Peter denied ever knowing Christ. Now, I've said this before. We don't uh, verbally say, I don't know the man. But sometimes, sometimes, lean in, lean in. Sometimes our actions says, I never knew him. Sometimes our thought process says, I'm not one of them. Sometimes, is it tax season? Sometimes what we submit and what we write in the little lines or type in the lines, based on the return, we say, I never knew him. Jesus is revealing to us that God can, he sees everything and he lets us know what he's pleased with. He also lets us know the consequences of the decisions that we intentionally make to say, I don't know him. Peter wept bitterly. But I love the text, how it says, verse um, 61, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Now, some of you grew up in a household like me. My mom and dad didn't have to say nothing. I could be cutting up in church, clowning, you know. I got the best jokes. Everybody on the line, on the, on the bench, the pews, just enjoying my jokes. And then my dad would just look at me. Didn't say nothing, just looked at me. It wasn't a smile, but he looked at me. Even though he didn't say nothing, I shut up. Then I started getting everybody in order on my pew. Because my dad looked at me. And every now and then, every now and then, I'm talking about me, I'm cutting up. 
everybody else seems to be enjoying me cutting up out of order and the conviction hasn't kicked in yet and then there's the Holy Spirit and the Father from heaven looks at me and thankfully he doesn't kick me to the side but he looks at me what is what's the look saying I'm convinced that he's not saying like we would say you lousy low down dirty I believe that he keeps it on the higher level you're better than that my blood was shed for you I was crucified for your sins I love you too much for you to continue down that road he looks at us in love conviction yes I've taught you too much. You have home training. I'm going back to my home now. Some other people may not. You know right from wrong. We've sat and talked about this. We have shared the consequences. You've seen the consequences of others. Don't you keep going down that road. There, there, there's a destruction at the end of the road it seems funny it seems like it's fun everybody's with you it's a look of love but it's a look of chastisement as well he says you know no that's not where I want you to be that's not where I want you to be but Aren't you grateful that God is a God of restoration? I'm grateful. Yes, Lord. Aren't you grateful that God is a God who forgives? Yes. Aren't you grateful that even though you have fallen seven times and eight times and nine times and ten times, the Lord says it's time to rise up. You've been in that rut long enough. It's time to rise up. You made excuses long enough. It's time to rise up. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. COVID was 2020 and 2021. It's time to rise up. (laughs) All right. Peter, Peter denied Christ three times. But this same Peter we see over in Acts. Judas denied Christ as as the Lord or um, being a follower because he just kissed him. And he had told the other people, the one whom I kiss, this is the one you go get. The scripture says Peter excuse me, Judas hanged himself. Peter wept bitterly, but he didn't hang himself. God chose to use the failures of Peter to help strengthen him and strengthen others. And so by the time we get to Acts, the second chapter, Peter weeps bitterly over here in Luke 22. 
Christ dies on the cross, is resurrection, resurrected. And then he goes and finds Peter. Forgives Peter. Restores Peter. And empowers Peter. By the time I get to Acts 2 and 41, this same fella that says, I don't know him, I never knew him, and some translations say he cursed or called down cursing and said that I don't know the Christ three times. This same Peter who believed uh, as he proclaimed in Acts 2 and 41 says, those who believe that Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, 3,000 in all. Because God restored him, gave him another chance didn't cast him aside, didn't hold him down because of his past failures. I'm convinced that God wants to use somebody in this place who have been worried about what they've done in the past and the fact that their past is hindering them from being used by God. I'm convinced that God is still using people with messed up past that have made bad decisions and poor decisions who have suffered some consequences and may still be suffering some consequences but the God that I know the God that I serve can work through the pain, can work through the failures, can work through the setbacks to share the good news and that thousands of other people still can be saved. (laughs) What a great reminder for us today. Our Lord is all-knowing and is not surprised by what has happened in your life, nor is he surprised by what is yet to happen. But here's the good news. Don't lose hope because of the problems of the past. Don't lose hope because of the setbacks that's common on this life's journey. God has a wonderful plan for you. Here's the other word, in spite of you. Aren't you grateful for that? In spite of us, in spite of us, when we thought we had it all together, nobody was going to find out. Nobody can see me because I'm blind, other, because I'm, I'm, I'm invisible. Nobody can see. When we thought we had it all together, God didn't default on his purpose. God didn't change the plan for your life. You may have had some delays, but God's plan for your life has not changed. He has a great plan for your life. And can I conclude with Romans 8 and 28? In spite of our failures, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the consequences, in spite of the times that you wanted to give up, and you didn't feel worthy in spite of the fact that you hurt people and others have hurt you. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good. I need to pause there. Let me hit reverse. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, of those who love him, the righteous, those who are called to the work that he has called us to. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I'm done.
but his purpose, not my purpose, not your purpose, not based on what they said I should do, not based on who they said I should be, based on his purpose. Bless the Lord. Let him work his purpose through your brokenness. Let him work his purpose through your failures. Let him work his purpose through your setbacks. Let him work his purpose through the consequences of bad decisions. And God is still doing great things through ordinary people like you and me. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Just like 3,000 could be saved by one message, I'm convinced that there are still many others that can be saved by the message that you carry. No, you don't have to wear a collar. You tell your story. No, you don't have to have a bunch of titles or letters. You tell your story. Tell what the Lord has done for you. And we all have a story. We don't all want to tell our story, but we all have a story. We like to tell the good part of the story, but we all have a story. And all of the story ain't that good. But God can use that messed up part of your story and help bring people out of some messed up situations. Praise the Lord. I'm convinced that he's not the, I'm not the only one that God has delivered out of some messed up situations. I'm not the only one that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. I'm not the only one who didn't wait to clean himself up but came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in him a sweet resting place. And the psalmist say, he has made me glad. Bless the Lord. Come on. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Will you stand with me? Just thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his grace. We can learn from our mistakes, but we can learn from the mistakes of others. Some are not in the Bible, so I'm just walking around. Amen. <laughs> Let's learn from those mistakes as well. Well, Christ has given his life for you. And, and, and we're planning to have baptism next Sunday. Amen. Bless the Lord. And then we are planning to have another baptism the first Sunday in May. Bless the Lord. Amen. So it starts with a personal relationship, knowing that Christ loves you with an unconditional love, knowing that you haven't always, here's the word, been a Christian. If you've always been a Christian, it's a good chance you're still lost. Because Jesus says in John 3, you must be born again. We weren't born physically as Christians. There was a conviction that we have sinned and all have sinned. Yes. There was a conviction that we need the Savior. I need the Savior. Yes. And then there was a cry for help. Yes, Lord, save me. Yes. And the scripture says, whoever that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He will no wise cast you out. That's everybody. Yes. With my messed up background, yes, you and your mama with the messed up background, he can save all of us, all of us, amen. But it starts with us individually, amen. Mama have to call on the Lord for herself. And you have to call on, my, on your Lord for yourself. So as we go before the Lord, maybe that's your prayer tonight. Lord, today, Lord, save me. Lord, I believe that you're the Savior. God, thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Lord, thank you for setting free. Thank you for deliverance. In spite of us, God, we carry the same message that Peter carried. And God, we believe that your power through the Holy Spirit is still saving, breaking yokes, 
tearing down strongholds. So we bring your people to you, O oh God. Save, set free, and deliver. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. The people of God said amen and amen. Sometimes people come forward during this time, says, I'm ready to make a commitment. If that's you, we welcome you. For some, some needs a church family, need a church home. They make that decision. I already know the Lord, but need a church family. If that's you, we welcome you. Some say, I know the Lord, but never been baptized. If that's you, you're welcome. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Some come at the end. Yeah. God is. Come on. Bless his name. And I never come back. Because God is. may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. Uh, some choose to come after the benediction to make a commitment or to share where they are with the Lord. And some of us will still be around after the benediction. Praise God. What's the purpose of reflecting upon the resurrection of Christ? Once a month, and certainly it can be done more, we commemorate what Christ has done for us. And so as we prepare to commune together, and for those who 
We believe that this is for those who've made the decision, the commitment to follow Christ. And if you have not received your elements, raise your hand. Our ushers are ready and willing to bring them to you. And for those who are tuning in online, we ask that you prepare as well. I just want to read a few verses from 1 Corinthians 11 as we prepare to commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Savior, while at the same time taking it personal, the very fact that he did it for me, that, that's taking it personal. I, I know for God so loved the world, but he loved me. So take it personal. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I'm jumping to verse 28. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. As we pray, examine yourself. Father, we thank you for these elements. We thank you for this time that we are able to share together. We thank you, God, for what you've done for us. We thank you for what you've done for us individually, oh God. God, if there's anything that's in our heart, our minds, and our spirit that is inconsistent with you and your will, we pray that it be removed even as we examine ourselves and give thanks to you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. On that cross, the scripture declares that Jesus was beaten, not for his, his sins, but before our sins. The bread represents that broken body that was beaten for our sins. Let us eat together. From that broken body that was blood that was shed again not for his sins but for our sins and without the shedding of blood there could be no forgiveness there could be no cleansing thank God for the shedding of the blood that sets us free let us drink together praise the Lord Bless the Lord. the Lord. We have the opportunity to worship the Lord in giving. We know some give by way of givelify. And um, as our ushers prepare some, some give by cash and check. Amen. Some send or mail their uh, gifts and some give by cash and check. 
And so for those who are given by cash or check today, uh, you have an opportunity to come. Uh, ushers will uh, escort or guide you around. And so those who are worshiping, giving, and bringing their gifts, we ask that you come, stand, and our ushers will guide you as you bring your gifts to the Lord. And we are grateful for your generosity. We're grateful for you believing in this ministry. We're grateful for what God is doing through you and in you as you sow seeds into this ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our children. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless his name. And if you need assistance, our ushers will come to you and receive your gifts if you're not able to bring them. Thank you so much. Real briefly, real briefly, real briefly, we'll have just a few points of information that we will share and then we will uh, go forward. Uh, I think as Karen will come and share about some information, we want to keep in touch with you. So, so she's going to share some information that she wants to help you all to help us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You, if you have email, you've received notices, more than one, that we're doing an update on contact information. So the reason why we're doing con up an update on contact information is because everyone doesn't have email. And we want to make sure that all of our members are getting all of the information when we have activities and events, et cetera. So what we have today out at the um, Welcome Center is there are forms with some instructions and um, we're asking everyone to participate in updating your information um, and you get to choose because the church is moving into starting in may you'll have an option on how you want to receive information from us we're trying something a little new so you'll be able to continue to get emails if you choose and if you choose emails you have the opportunity to continue to get the attachments and details and zoom links but everyone doesn't have email. We want to still make sure that you get information. So we also have, a, you, you, you can choose voicemail. And so if you have a cell phone or a landline phone, you'll get a couple of, like you get the emails from us a couple of times a week, you'll get a voicemail that's a recording that says, Bible study is Wednesday, uh, choir rehearsal is uh, Saturday, new members class is on Thursday, um, and it'll have additional information. I won't be able to give you Zoom links because we're not able to put that in voicemail, but that's an option you can choose. Also, you can choose text messaging. Text messaging, because we have a limited number of um, characters, sometimes we'll be able to put Zoom links in, but you'll, be able, you'll, you'll get those same messages. Um, they'll just be a little abbreviated. But we want to make sure that you're getting information and that you can also contact us. So. There are forms with directions out at the Welcome Center. I'll be sending out emails uh, continually and we'll be doing this all month. So you don't have to grab it today, but we short, certainly wanna make sure that you either use the emails and respond. The forms will be attached to the emails that you get for the next several weeks. And the forms that are attached to the emails have uh, fillable PDFs. So you can open the form, you can type in your information and you can email it back to the church office. 
or if you want to fill out the forms when you get here on Sunday mornings, you're welcome to do that as well. You can turn them into the ushers or turn them in directly to me. We want to make sure we don't put them in the black mailbox that's by the office. The black mailbox by the office is for our finance team. So we don't want to you know, fill that mailbox with uh, contact information. So give it directly to me or give it to one of the ushers and they'll make sure that we get it. So then I'll be updating all month the information as it comes in. And then starting in May, you'll begin to see you getting communication by whichever way you chose. If during the course we're going to try it out for a couple of months and, and assess how it goes, and let's say you pick email, um, but actually that, that's not working for me, I want to do text messaging, just let us know. We can update it. We're, we're going to see how this works for the church, but we want to make sure that we're keeping in touch with you and that you know what's going on. Amen. Have a good day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So help us. Help us to help you the best that we can. Thank you so much. Real briefly, real briefly, this afternoon at 4 o'clock uh, at Pilgrim Rest, there's, I think it's called the 100 Women in White uh, Service. Um, uh, my wife, Jackie Newman, is, is one of the honorees. So, so we'll invite you to come and share as we encourage uh, our Pilgrim Rest family. On next Sunday, we will not have Sunday school, but we will be gathering here, 9.15, 9.15 sharp, Miss Pamela says. Uh, we're gonna have our, our young people, they were rehearsing in here, was sounding good. So they'll be having a pageant presentation so we want you to be here. They'll be starting at 9.15. My, my dad used to tell us you can't leave home at 9.15 and get here at 9.15. I, I, I learned that that's true. That's true, Don. That's true. So, so we want you to be here and encourage our young people. After the 9.15 um, time, the, the pageant, the presentations, we'll have breakfast in the fellowship hall. Amen. Amen. Don't just come for the breakfast. Come for the... 9.15 first, amen, and then we go to the breakfast, and then at 11 a.m. we will have baptism, amen, in here, and so, and then with our regular worship, we will not um, have Wednesday study, noonday, or um, 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 6.30 p.m., but we will have our young people rehearsing. Now, is that 6 or 6.30? 6 p.m. So our young people will be rehearsing. So for those parents, guardians, grandparents who will be bringing the young people, you will need to have them at here at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, even though we will not have our Bible study. But on Holy Thursday, amen. Can somebody say Holy Thursday? Amen. This music ministry, our mime, uh, our guest uh, singers, Sonia Jones, Teresa Davis, we will be celebrating again continually uh, our reflection upon the Christ whom we serve and the sacrifice that he made on our behalf. So we want you to be here, bring others, bring your family, and we look forward to having you here. Of those who want to uh, participate or be a part of a Good Friday service, uh, the Ministerial Alliance is hosting a Good Friday service noontime at noontime on that Friday at Pilgrim Rest, um, 1800 Martin Luther King. So we certainly want to welcome that. Um, also on next Sunday uh, at 4 p.m., I know it's a busy Sunday, uh, those who would like to join us will be encouraging the New Jerusalem Baptist Church family. Um, they've asked me to bring a word and to encourage Pastor Jerry and Felicia Jones in their 11th year celebration. So those who are willing to be with us, again, our music ministry, uh, they've been working hard. So we thank you. Thank you, Juwan. Thank God for these musicians. Thank you all for so much for our, the work that you're doing. And then we thank you for your support. And we thank you for the sacrifices that you make to make this ministry what it is and what God would have it to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody give Reverend Tim's a microphone because we said we're going to put him to work. So he's going to dismiss us in prayer. And uh, if you want to sing a song, you can, but that's his prayer. <laughs> Will you stand? He's singing Thursday. Amen. So he's, so let us.
celebrate. And to all of our visitors, if you, this is your first time here, we would love to meet you. My wife and I, we would love to meet you. Amen. Let us bow. Gracious Father, we're so thankful and grateful for your presence and your power here. The, uh, the, the fervency of your word that has penetrated our hearts and minds. And we thank you for the preached word. We thank you for Pastor Newman. We thank you, oh God, just for being who you are. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for guiding us and guarding us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you, oh God, for all that you are and then all that you do. And so we're just grateful just to be uh, able to participate in the grace that you've given. I ask you now to watch over us as we leave this place, tend to our needs, tend to our activities, oh God, that we might know that without a shadow of a doubt, you who is keeping us. And so we give you praise, glory, and honor as we leave this place, uh, but we know it's never out of your presence. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Proved himself right down to the end. Who has proved himself to 